Africa, the world's second largest continent. Nestled on the east coast is Tanzania, home to the most famous and with its 15,000 square kilometers largest national park of all, the Serengeti. The name Serengeti is derived from the Maasai word meaning endless plains. It invokes majestic images of the natural world. The Serengeti is not simply one vast open plain. There are abundant water sources that appear and disappear according to the seasons. The islands of rock, known as Kopjes, lie exposed like the vertebrae of huge, long-forgotten beasts. This is the land where mankind was born. The Serengeti boasts a cast of leading players, which collectively were once known as the Big Five. However, their size is not in question. Their impressive nature is the tragic reason for their nickname. It was said that the stuffed heads of the Big Five looked better mounted on hunters' walls than on their own magnificent shoulders. The park is famous for its annual wildebeest migration. Millions of wildebeest cross this land in search for green grass. Big bellies precede the great birth. Perhaps the most dangerous journey any animal has to make is its first, the struggle to be born. The plains are blessed with a glut of calves in the wet season. Predators can only eat so much, so this mass delivery of half a million is one way the Serengeti guarantees survival to the greater share of the next generation. The wildebeest are not alone. Diversity is Mother Nature's forte. The zebra migrate with the wildebeest. Buffalo are intensely aggressive towards any predator that has an eye on their young. Chicks of both the elegant secretary bird and the less than elegant vulture all find maturity in one single defining moment. A wing flap of faith. These birds will never reach the skies. Instead, they will mature into this, the largest living bird on earth. There is no do or die plummet for the chicks of the ostrich. Leopard cubs share their early lives together. Once mature, they lose their sibling bond and become solitary hunters. Females are still subordinate to males in baboon circles, but an infant confers upon its mother a higher social standing in the troop community. The small but adaptable hyrax suckles while its huge and once believed distant relative does the same. Naturalists of old classified the hyrax and the elephant as unlikely second cousins. Spotted hyenas are marathon mothers. When providing sustenance for their cubs, they follow the herds to feed, only to return to the den soon after. It's a round trip that can take days. This level of maternal care is the highest of any mammal in this African paradise. As for finding nuances of animal behavior, the family is the best place to start. Golden jackals seem to represent the perfect example of what we regard as a good family. They mate for life 
And even when their offspring can go at it alone, they sometimes stay to play babysitter for their younger siblings, albeit for selfish reasons. By contrast, the roles of individuals in a close family unit of lions are not so easily defined. Lions and lionesses, consisting of aunts, sisters, cousins, mothers and daughters, all stay together in a pride. Once a dominant male gets too old to defend himself, he will be driven off by more powerful contenders. The pride's cubs are then slaughtered by the invaders. It's believed that male lions will only nurture their own offspring and that the death of the cubs brings the females into heat almost immediately. Lions make bad foster parents. A more typical cat family is that of the cheetah. Always watchful, these lithe athletic predators are invariably single mothers. A mother raises her offspring and when old enough, the cubs leave her side to find mates in territories of their own. In most cases, the mother will have nothing to do with her offspring again. Rarely seen in the Serengeti is the wild cat. Parasites and insects plague mammals and birds alike. Grooming maintains healthy hair and feathers and keeps parasites under control. In many cases, grooming is a social event where relationships are forged and maintained by close physical contact. The tongue could be considered a flannel. As for foreign bodies, one by one, they can be removed and often consumed in the process by another family member. You groom my back and I'll groom yours it's a mutually satisfying relationship as much as it provides a small measure of sustenance. Sometimes another species entirely will take on the grooming duties. This is a good arrangement if you're physically incapable of scratching your own back. Comfort can also mean simply having a roof over your head, even if it's made of grass. There's no place like it, and in the Serengeti, homes are mostly constructed. Weaver birds are so known because of the intricacy of their woven nests. Others make use of what's available. Hornbill chicks find shelter in an old tree. The male feeds his offspring through the tiny cracks in the bark. The hornbill young have to judge their coming out party at the right time. Too late and they'll be too big to squeeze through the gap. Too early and their wings will not support them aloft, resulting in a possible fatal plummet to the ground. These holes in the ground are probably second-hand dwellings. Beneath the plains are a number of intricate tunnel systems. Jackals use deserted aardvark burrows, though extensions are added from time to time. Modifications are always being added to birds' nests. The snake eagle adds nest building material to its home perched high on the precarious smaller branches of an acacia tree. The itinerant wildebeest, 
the very epitome of Serengeti's fauna. And behind them, a herd of cows. These are the sacred animals of the only people that live in the Serengeti, the Maasai. Wearing striking red clothes, they herd their cattle. When the great annual migration starts, one and a half million wildebeest walk a rough circle of 500 miles. Their epic trek covers most of the different regions found in the Serengeti ecosystem. They travel over kopjes and through woodlands, night and day. The migration is one of the wonders of the natural world and stands as a testament to those who have kept the Serengeti alive despite ever onward human encroachment. It is a breathtaking and humbling sight. The herds have to cross many lakes and rivers to get to their goal. A fecundity of new grasses 